If you have an outdated laminate countertop like this and you've been thinking about replacing it with tile, well, you'd be looking at quite a bit of work. First of all, you'd have to tear out the old laminate countertop and then replace it with a piece of plywood. That is until inventor Armin Tavi came up with a system for putting ceramic tile right on top of a laminate countertop like this. Hey, Armin. Hi, Ron. How are, How are you? you? Where'd you I'm get this idea? Well, as a tile setter, I always felt guilty about removing an existing top and just throwing it away. I said, why not take advantage of it and find some way to get mortar to stick to it? And you've done that? And I've done that. I'd like to jump right in and see how this works. Armin starts by applying a specially designed adhesive directly to the laminate countertop. I'm using an eighth inch V-notch sawtooth trowel. I found that this is the perfect size, but just the right amount of glue so that you don't have too much. You have enough to do the job and not so much that you make a mess. Now this adhesive is not intended for attaching tile, but instead paper. This is a fiberglass reinforced paper. The countertop itself, the laminate, is not friendly to mortar. We know that. So the, the glue sticks to the laminate, the paper sticks to the glue, mortar loves the paper, so we have a tileable surface. All right, so this is down, and uh, how long do you have to wait before you go to the next step? There's no waiting. Yeah? You can proceed to the next step. Which is? Putting a thin layer of mortar on it to acclimate the surface of the paper to the product that you're going to use to install your tile. If you're painting a piece of wood, you put a coat of primer on it. Then you put the finish coat. So we're going to put a skim coat on this to get the paper ready for the finish coat. Many countertops, like this one, have raised lips on the front edge to keep water from spilling off. To create a perfectly flat surface for the tile, Armin and I apply additional mortar to the front third of the countertop, then screed off the excess with a straight edge. Just to see how this system works on a variety of surfaces, I've set up a piece of beadboard to serve as a back wall. Once again, the adhesive is applied directly to the surface and the paper laid on top, completely bridging and concealing the grooves in the paneling underneath. Then, like the countertop, a skim coat of mortar is applied. A laminated countertop backsplash is prepped in the same way. First adhesive, then paper. Now, what we've really done here is converted a plastic laminate countertop into a basically almost a concrete surface yeah yeah and you've done it by adding really nominal thickness here really from oh. zero to about a sixteenth of an inch in the front leading edge because of the slight hump in the radius of the leading edge of the countertop okay. to keep water from dripping off the counter very cool before we continue I make a trip to my truck to collect a bag of thin set mortar I picked up earlier at the home improvement center from here on, the process is the same as for any tileable surface. The thin set mortar is applied, then raked with a notch trowel. The ridges left by the notch trowel distribute the mortar evenly, leaving it a uniform thickness. I'm applying additional mortar to the inside corners of the bullnose tiles that line the countertop. This process, called buttering, eliminates any voids underneath reducing the likelihood that the edge tiles might crack if they're bumped or struck. Armin inserts spacers between the edge tiles, then starts on the field. Now notice how the mortar appears wet. One of the biggest causes of tile failure is trying to cover too large an area at one time, which can allow the thin set to begin drying before the tiles are laid on top. You can avoid this problem by mixing smaller batches of mortar and working smaller sections at a time. Tapping the tiles with a rubber or plastic mallet also helps them settle into place and bond with the mortar. Spacers keep the joints a consistent width and in alignment. Now Armin has come up with his own version of the tile spacer. The disc shape keeps it sitting on top of the tile and makes it easy to remove. One side of the spacer is used on straight runs and the other is designed for the corners where the joints intersect. With the deck tiles in place, Armin applies mortar to the back wall. 
Here, he starts at the bottom, then stacks one row on top of another. Once again, the spacers keep the joints uniform and prevent the tiles from slipping downward. Remember I mentioned the spacers were easy to remove? Well, now you can see what I mean. Grouting is the next step. Armin mixes his a bit on the dry side. The idea here is to use a fair amount of pressure to force the grout to the bottom of the joints, filling them completely. Then he holds the rubber float up on edge and removes the excess from the face of the tile. A damp sponge and water take care of the final cleanup. Usually this needs to be done a few times to completely remove the surface haze. Changing the water frequently helps. So there's been no trade-off by leaving the counter here and going with this system? Absolutely no compromise whatsoever. So what else could you put this on besides a plastic laminate? Just about any surface you can think of that you have on your countertop, I don't care what it is, it'll go over it, Ron. Wood, plastics, metal, just about anything. You got any more tricks up your sleeve? Yes, I do, Ron. Will you come back and share them with me? I'd be delighted. Okay, it was fun. I got one favor to ask. Could you take us out with a few more bars of that song about the smile? Sure. Here it goes. It has magic powers, most would say, and we all would probably agree. For anyone who tries to beat it can't simply win, 